Here we are with another episode of the Basic Bogies podcast. Today, we have a guest, Anthony Durso. He's a photographer, works in production out of Pennsylvania. So, Anthony, just give us a quick little intro about you and what it is that you do. Well, thanks for having me first. Uh, first time ever doing like a podcast and being interviewed. It's kind of kind of weird. I do the interviewing usually. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so I live in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And for 20 years, I've been working in TV news. Um, I started my career in Wilkes-Barre, uh, Pennsylvania, and I did that for 10 years. And then after 10 years, I came down to work at a station in Harrisburg. And for the last about year and a half, I've been working uh, – with it's it's a team called Project Baltimore, and we're a, a investigative journalism unit based out of Baltimore, and we do store like long form kind of stories about education and investigating any kind any kind of story that's like education based. So, do you do what? What's like kind of your role in the production? Are you video? You know, DP? Is it audio? What, what's kind of like your your title? I guess. So our team has. Five members. Um, we have two producers, uh, a reporter, and then there's two photographers. So I'm one of the photographer editors for, for our team and kind of split that up. And I've been doing that now 20 years. Awesome. Yeah. What do you use to, to edit in? I'm just curious. Uh, so we use we used all Adobe. We have Adobe uh, Premiere, After Effects, mm -hmm. Photoshop, um, Illustrator, uh, Lightroom, very user friendly programs. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I use Premiere a bit. Um, so, like, part of where, like, I'm we're out of Syracuse, New York, um, and obviously, like, there's still the TV production here, but there's quite an incentive for films shooting here, just from the county and the state. So, more and more of that is staying here now with like the dailies, and we've been learning more and more. Like, I'm an audio guy; that's my main background. I don't really know video, um, but the videographer that works with me at the studio has been you know, diving into Da Vinci because he's been doing the dailies on all these, you know, some of these mid-sized films that have been shooting here. So it's, it's been interesting to see more and more outside of just premiere. Cause that's what I'm yeah. used to at least. Yeah. I, I first learned on a program called Vegas, like back in high school. I don't even mm -hmm. think it's in existence anymore. And like my first real, like non-linear editing stuff was Avid and Avid's uh, <laughs> not a fun, I don't like Avid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I use Pro Tools. I use Pro Tools every day, but I don't use anything that they make outside of Pro Tools. So, yeah, yeah. I have friends who are on Avid, and they're just like, "Why would we wish we had Premiere?" Cool. So uh, we kind of made the connection here. Nate from Acorn Hills reached out to to us and told us to kind of get in touch with you. So, um, yeah. I mean, I, just kind of tell us your story with how you first got connected with Acorn Hills. I guess somehow Nate and I connected last fall. Um, I'm like an, I'm an amateur photographer as well. And mm -hmm. I have a love for golf. So last year I picked up my first DSLR and would just go out and take like photos of the courses I'm playing, or if I'm with my buddies playing, just snapping some photos of them like swinging or just hanging out. And, uh, somehow Nate, somehow Nate found me on Instagram, like through one of my photos and he sent me a message and kind of filled me in on, like what he does and what Acorn Hills is. And mm -hmm. um, I'm all about small business. My wife has a small business and Nate's story is really interesting and cool. So I'm 100% yeah. behind Nate and Acorn Hills as, as much as I possibly can. Cool. When did you get started in the golf then? Uh, I would say like 2006, I got a one of my coworkers won a free set of golf clubs at a tournament and he's like, Hey, do you want these? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And they were Tommy armor irons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't have it. Um, I would like play with my dad and my friends. Like we would do a scramble once a year or we'd go out and just play 18. And I would use my dad's uh, Nike Sasquatch driver <laughs> or I would have, I had like an actual one wood that okay. was in our yeah, basement yeah. somehow. <laughs> Um, so I would play like once or twice a year and then around 2014, 2015 in there, um, I started playing like twice a week. I'd play like on my off day, which was like Monday, Tuesday, and then I would play and I worked night shift. So I would go out and play Thursday or Friday morning and I just got, I got bit by the bug and it was yeah. like, I just, that's all I could focus on. And, um, I got married in 2016 and I, and I was still working night shift and I was like, I said to my wife, I'm like, I 
want to keep playing golf? Is that cool? And she was like, yeah, go ahead. With the one caveat was I had a walk <laughs> and I could like play like nine in the morning and I was off for that. And my wife is very, very supportive of my hobby of golf. <laughs> nice. um, we were just planning out our September. We're, we're like, like we kind of plan our, our whole month and, um, she's like, I have you penciled in the play on the 21st. Is that right? I'm like, yep. And then she was asking me, what's your golf plan for this weekend too? And I'm like, uh, maybe take the weekend off. Not sure. <laughs> um, nice. but then like, like I really got into golf during COVID. I would, yeah. I would say I'm one of the COVID golfers, um, working in like the news industry during that time was not fun. <laughs> Yeah. There was a lot of stress, a lot of, um, I, like anxiety. Like I had a lot of, I, I built up a lot of anxiety working during that time. And, um, our golf courses shut down like March 15th and I had just gotten a new driver and I, all I wanted to do was go and play around a golf with a new driver. And I, I the, our golf courses in Pennsylvania opened up, I think it was May 7th. And I had a tea time booked for like May 8th at four o'clock. I yeah. did not care. I just needed to go out and play golf. Yeah, yeah. I didn't care what I scored. I didn't care how I played. I just wanted to go hit, hit a little white ball and chase it around an open field. <laughs> and then like that summer was our work schedule is really loose. <laughs> so I would, I could say it now the statute of limitations are over. Um, I would tell the, my cowork, my the reporter I worked with, we covered state politics, and I would tell him the day before, "Hey, I got a business meeting at seven a.m. Um, I should be wrapped up by around 12. And he'd be like, "Okay, we'll start working at one." <laughs> <laughs> nice. So yeah, I got a, I got a lot of golf in 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 twenty twenty, and then it's just kind of um, kind of spiraled and just. I play like once, once a week, twice a week. And, um, Thursday nights, like I'll go and I'll go to the range. I'll get either 80 balls or 120 and I'll just go through my bag, start at 60 degree wedge and go to driver and just keep oh, yeah. swinging. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm kind of the same, you know, being in the, the recording studio, we were the bottom of the list on essential businesses to reopen. So once those golf courses open and during COVID, I had played, you know, for a few years seriously before that, but I was then out there like almost every day. Um, yeah. And that's when I think I really started walking golfing too. And now it's like, I, unless it's a tournament, I'm walking the whole time. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah. I, um, so I like being in Harrisburg, we're, we're in like an hour and a half from Philly and yeah, if anybody, any of your listeners know, Philadelphia just has some of the best golf courses. I think this is probably the best area for golf, um, yeah. public and private. And in November of 2022, I got, uh, I played, it's called a course called Jeffersonville out in Philly. Mm -hmm. um, of all the courses in Philadelphia, and I will die on this hill, Aronimic, Marion, uh, Golf Hills, um, I don't count Pine Valley, Pine Valley's in Jersey. But Jeffersonville is a top 10 golf course in the Philadelphia region. If any of your listeners have a chance to go play it, look up Jeffersonville. It's a Donald Ross course. It's a Muni course owned by the township. Yeah. You play 6,300 yards from the back tees. Um, their super, superintendent, um, Rich, keeps the place immaculate. Absolutely immaculate. And I went and played my first round there and... Um, the guys I played with walked and I made the decision last year to try to walk 50 rounds. Mm -hmm. So in the calendar year, I, I came up short. I ended up like 38 total walking rounds and 54 total rounds for the year. Nice. But if, but if I could walk now, it's like, I have to walk. Like it just, it's very unnatural for me to cart it. Yeah. I think it keeps you in the rhythm of things too, but I, I'll have to keep that in mind. Cause I go down to, even though I'm from here, I'm a big Philly sports fan. So I go down yeah. once or twice a year for Phillies or Eagles games and stuff. And, uh, yeah, but yeah, we, we got, we got a bit of a following there just cause we've had a couple Philly guys on already. Um, and, and then the Acorn Hills connection, even though we're like central New York, a lot of our listeners are kind of more Northeast and, and mostly New York and Pennsylvania. In, in fact. Yeah. Yeah, if you ask John the bumbling golfer, he'll tell you about Jeffersonville. Oh, we had John it's, on 
a couple months ago now, but he was he was a blast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like my wife. Um, she doesn't golf at all. She'll like cart around with me from time to time or or what or, you know, she'll come out and maybe hit a ball, pick up and then just go to the next one. <laughs> and she just said she's like, oh, there's a mall down by where Jefferson Village. She's like, how far is the mall from there? And I'm like, it's 15 minutes. Great. I can drop you off there and I'll meet you for dinner afterwards. I'm like, great. <laughs> Perfect. So now I'm trying over the next six weeks to figure out what Saturday I can go play. Uh, what's kind of like a, a goal you have for your golf game? Uh, I mean, it's kind of the end of the season now, but maybe like kind of going into next year and next season. Um, so I, I set a goal this year. I got fitted in the off season for the first time. Cool. Um, I went to a place in Lancaster called in Lancaster, Pennsylvania called Pull the Pin. Great guys, locally owned shop. Um, I set the goal this year. I wanted to try to get to a 15 handicap. And I started the season at 20.7. 20, 20. And after my round Saturday, I'm down to 16.3. Nice. Getting there. So my goal, yeah, I'm just like <laughs> one good round away. I just want to hit that 15 yeah, yeah. mark. I want to see it on the gen app, C15. And I'm like, okay, we hit the goal for the year. Even if we go back up, doesn't matter. Yeah, it starts getting to that point where like, this year, I feel like, honestly, I didn't really make any progress. I just kind of stayed there. It's at that point where I can I can birdie every hole, but I can also triple bogey every hole. And it's just, you know, stringing together enough of them. And, and like I said, kind of before we started recording, we're coming off that four-day member guest that me and Gary were playing. We had some good stretches, but we also had some really ugly stretches in that uh, those oh, four days. It's Probably the there first was a lot day was of, the best. <laughs> no, not really. More of the... The, honestly, yesterday, Sunday, well, this has come out in a couple of weeks, but the, the final day, we won two matches yesterday to win some money back. So yeah, that helped. But we were battling some heavy, heavy rain as well. Um, so it was, you know, it gets tough. And it's a, the course is already built on a swamp. So just a little bit of rain is not good. And it, it downpoured for a few hours. So. And you got to play. There's no telling them the whole yeah. That's the thing. Everyone's playing. It's match play. And so everyone has to deal with it. It was, you know, I've, I've played in scrambles in the rain, but this was the first kind of match play and it's best ball. So everyone's, you're playing your own ball. So you plug, you know, it was lift and lift clean in place, but it still got pretty ugly. Yeah. Not fun. Any, any, any time I'm, I even see the remote possibility of like rain in the forecast. There's no way I'm going out. Not whatsoever. <laughs> I, I dread rain in general. <laughs> yeah. I would rather I would rather a foot of snow than two inches of rain. <laughs> and I I don't like winter, but snow is so much more manageable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching today's episode. To see more of our content, be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe on YouTube. We can be found at Basic Bogies on all platforms. Thanks. We hope to see you on the next one.